Hey what's up, it's Zach and I'm back with another illustration walkthrough. This one's going to be me creating a cyberpunk portrait type illustration and so yeah I got the reference photo from Unsplash. I'm going to link to that in the description. Um, it's a great place to find free reference photos. Quite a bit of good stuff on there. As far as all the photos off to the side, I just got those off Pinterest um, and those are just to get references for colors which I ended up changing quite a bit at the end but yeah. So right now I'm kind of getting just the broad outlines of everything with the pen tool. Um, if you've seen any of my videos, you know pretty much all I use is pen tool, pathfinder, um, isolation modes, and stuff like that. A little bit of blend tool, but I actually don't even think I use any of that here. So yeah, just kind of tracing over the broad forms, just getting everything um, down a little bit. Uh, most of the time I start with the blacks, and then I move on to my shading and the background and everything. Um, so I actually had some people reach out and say that they are having a lot of trouble using the pen tool and honestly uh, I'm gonna do a video just on lines but honestly the pen tool just takes a lot of practice um, to get used to it's not super complex or anything it just the way the curves kinda work takes a second to get used to but once you do it's pretty easy and it's not like everything's set in stone once you put it down like that's the beauty of the pen tool you can go back and edit things so easily like where if you were doing your lines in Photoshop or anything, it's going to be pretty hard to kind of make it look um, realistically joined together later. Like, yeah. So I try a lot of things in this um, illustration that I hadn't done before, like the creases in the head where it looks kind of like metal joined together and then the, all the wires in the arm. I'd never really done that before. So it, a lot of this is kind of experimenting. And I also experiment with the background. Like, there's like probably two minutes of this video with me just trying different stuff in the background, but I figured I could leave it in. I edit that stuff out most of the time because it's not really essential to the video, but um, I figured it's kind of important to show that, like, I don't really go in with a plan or anything. I just kind of experiment a lot. And that's how I come up with the most of this stuff is just trying something it doesn't work oh well uh, I'll either save a back version of the file and then like once I get to once I get to do the background I'll save a version and then just trash that version and then go back to the save version if I like mess up a lot or if what I do turns out to look bad and so that's another important thing is I would say just make sure you save all the time because especially if you're doing like super complex um, pen tool stuff once you get so many points on the document, it's going to end up getting slow. And honestly, it's pretty annoying, uh, especially if you have a bad computer. The struggle's real, and your computer just will not like those huge files, and it'll start slowing down a lot. So you can start merging some stuff together like that also. Um, that'll help keep your files small. So yeah, now I'm starting to get into some of the detail work. Um, just. A lot of times I put my lines in pretty loose and then have to go in and edit parts of them because yeah they're just pretty messed up so as you can see like a lot of this stuff I'm having to go back and edit twice but it's mainly because when I put it down the first time I don't know if it's for sure what I'm going to be using like I'm just getting the idea out there and then a lot of times I'll go back and delete it if it's not good and as far as the drippings on the bottom I've probably said this in like three videos now but if you don't know how to draw like, kind of dripping effects on stuff you the best way to like get where you can kind of do that stuff just on command is to copy um, or trace over some like photos of actual dripping paint and once you kind of get used to those textures and understand how paint kind of runs then you'll be able to just draw it all the time so like I would Photoshop in a lot of times um, just textures of water and stuff on the photos and then trace those and then after a while I just got so used to being able to draw over the pieces of water or over the drippings that I just knew how to draw like it just made sense at how they flow in my mind or whatever so now I don't really have to look at the references but so yeah this is the part where I experiment in the background for five minutes um, uh, as you see I have that reference photo to the left um, I thought maybe doing something like that with like a brick background um, didn't work. Uh, right now I'm creating those lines with just the blend tool, but experiment with colors again. Um, like I said, this is all just trial and error. Like I did a bunch of stuff that I didn't like, and then 
accidentally come up with like a super or like a circular background and kind of liked it um the new the new gradient tool or whatever the new option in 2019 or whatever is crazy um if you haven't used that you really need to go check it out under gradient uh, under the gradient window is the third one to the right and so pretty much you can put points it's like gradient mesh you can put points down but it's a lot easier you don't have to mess with that weird grid you just like click a point and then the like gradient changes to fit the point you put down i don't know it's super cool you i definitely need to do a video on that definitely go experiment with that um i've used it on everything i've done for the past maybe month and it's really 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 cool um Unlike all the Photoshop changes, which aren't cool, <laughs> but um, so yeah, just doing some of the fine detail on the hands. I kind of stopped on the background for a second because I didn't know exactly know what I was gonna do, but then I just kind of thought about it for a second and figured something out. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I definitely made the figure not completely opaque, so it's not at a hundred percent opacity of everything. I think I've said this in a couple videos also, but I like to keep. Um, the backgrounds and stuff like maybe 80% opacity that way you can see some of the textures coming through and you kind of get to see that a bunch of stuff is starting to get layered on top of each other and that's not 100% realistic it's just kind of something that um, I like like watercolor paintings and stuff a lot of times have similar effects and I like to try to pull as much um, kind of conceptual ideas as I can from like actual paintings so how I think paint would actually you know behave and stuff like that so yeah just kind of experimenting with that like you can see all the lines in the background coming through but then I stopped the circles I used a clipping mask to kind of um, only fit those around their body I thought it kind of gave it a little more depth I guess so now I'm kind of going in and doing a lot of the fine lines kind of um, getting everything touched up exactly and honestly this is the part that takes the longest or could take the longest depending on um, how long I want to spend but like the fine details you can that's the great thing about Illustrator is you can just zoom and everything looks like you know what I'm saying it looks perfect and so you can kind of get lost in the details which I do quite a bit by accident like I'll zoom in too much and then in the final result you won't even be able to see it that much but so yeah I'm kind of getting in the details right now um, the only thing I would recommend is definitely always be pulling back um, making sure that you really know what you're doing and not just creating so many tiny lines in there that no one's really gonna be able to see it on the final product unless they zoom in like you are or anything like that which is all cool and stuff but like you want to make sure your viewer is getting the best um, representation of the image when they're just looking from you know 100% scale or whatever and this actually is a section that I cut out I worked on the background a lot but didn't really accomplish anything it was kind of just a lot of messing around and so pretty much all I did was I put a light gradient on the background um, I changed her shirt color right here a little lighter and changed her hand color because I wanted it to look different than her skin because it's supposed to be a metal hand or whatever and you're about to see me go into Photoshop and pretty much all I'm doing in Photoshop at first is like a color lookup and I think in levels which is something I use for colors all the time um, but I'm also dropping it in a glitch template that I made and I'm actually going to uh, either have uploaded or I'm about to upload a video on how I create these glitch templates in Photoshop from scratch um, if you're not interested in making your own, you just don't want to mess with Photoshop or whatever, but you still want the templates, you can just go over to my Patreon, which is also linked in the description, and I upload all those there. Um, the TLDR of how that works, if you don't want to check out the video and don't want to go to my Patreon, is I use a pattern um, of pretty much just squares and stuff, and then use the waves filter with like using the layers of smart layer, so it's non-destructive or whatever, so you can just update it over time, and... I just crop out the waves into little like square sections and then so it looks like little square glitch sections of the same image and you can just drop once you create one of these you can just drop any image in or whatever and then you can you know um, you since the since you're using smart layers and stuff you can go in and edit the waves later and everything so it's really pretty um, nifty once you have these like I've used I spent a long time making one and I use the same one for a lot of stuff now I'm just kind of getting not as lazy and I'm making a new one um, about once a week just 
to try to like for one for Patreon and for two just so I get more used to like you know exactly how the process goes and stuff so yeah I'm and also I go back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop here because I just place the Illustrator file in the Photoshop file and so every time I go in and you know uh, say like work on it and save the Illustrator version it automatically updates in the Photoshop file so that's always super nice so I'm back in here finishing off the hair and everything um, a lot of times I'll go back and forth especially on glitchy stuff because some of this stuff honestly you don't even see because it's covered with the glitches so like I don't want to I want to be as lazy as possible and don't want to do like a lot of detailing on stuff that's going to be covered with glitches anyway so a lot of times once I get like say three quarters of the way through I'll pop it in the, my template or whatever and then from then I'll figure out what parts I have left like for sure have to do in my final um, vectoring. Um, the only bad part about doing this is obviously your final result isn't vector. You can make obviously the Photoshop files as big as you want but um, you know it's still not gonna be vector so if you're looking for 100% vector stuff that's not gonna be the best way. Um, I haven't really found a great filter or anything in Illustrator for glitch stuff um, there's not really a waves equivalent or whatever, which is kind of frustrating, but yeah. And as you can see, once I have these like layers in Photoshop of the glitches, uh, I just use a clipping mask to kind of erase out sections. So like her hand, the um, wires in her arm or whatever, I definitely want you to see that. And the glitch was like the template I had created was kind of covering that. So I just use a clipping mask to kind of, you know, erase out the sections of the glitch like that because I want that to be a focal point. But then oh and also you wouldn't want like huge glitch parts over her face like or covering an eye or something so i always erase that but you want to do it in a non-destructive way so you just use the same template over and over or whatever so that's why you use clipping masks on the folders or whatever and yeah just kind of editing colors back in illustrator back in photoshop just back and forth back and forth back and forth um yeah i use these dash lines or whatever which is just um stroke and then I turned both options around and then mess with the gap and everything and yeah they're just dash lines that kind of give the illusion of wires so the rest of this is me just finishing off the fine details on like the shirt and hair and stuff so I'm just gonna let the rest of it play out in time lapse um thank you very much for checking out the video don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments like anything that doesn't make sense or anything anything that it's hard, too hard to tell what's going on through time lapse. I'm trying to figure out some videos that are not in time lapse, but yeah, those will be coming up soon. So thank you very much again.